why do we care that SBA 70 prepays are creeping up to 8%? And what does that even mean? Tell me what that means. Uh, sure, Bob. Well, thank you for having me. Sure. Uh, basically, prepayment speeds are important to uh, uh, the secondary market as well as other people who own um, 7 loans in that a higher prepayment speeds mean that the uh, underlying loans are paying down faster, um, either, either through a defaults or voluntary prepayment. Uh, right now, defaults are at historic lows, so that's not a concern. It's the voluntary prepayments that are starting to creep up. Uh, generally speaking, voluntary prepayments creep up when rates are rising, so with the anticipation that we're going to get a rate increase from the Fed this year, rate of you know, voluntary prepayments are starting to move a bit higher. Why so this think- is not, what, not unexpected. Yeah. yeah, I would expect the voluntary prepayments, prepayments to increase when rates are rising, but they haven't we're not in the environment yet, so this is an anticipation of that. What, what do you account for that? Uh, just things are starting to edge up a little bit. I think people are starting to get ahead of the curve. Uh, as rates rise, I would expect voluntary prepayments to, to continue moving higher. Um, however, I do expect the falls to stay at very low levels, which should keep overall prepayments in uh, you know the uh, no higher than say twelve percent. Well, that's uh, certain. Yeah, by twelve percent. And by 12%, I mean that is basically the amount of the outstanding balance that will prepay in a given year. So, again, the higher the number, the faster the loan prepays and the shorter the average life. Um, It's important. Oh, good. I was going to say, we have underwriters on the line. Uh, Average prepayment for a 25-year real estate loan, when do those pay off usually? Right right now, uh, uh, the, the... the, the CPRs are in the, in the uh, six to seven percent range for a longer paper. That creates an average life of, you know, eight to nine years. Okay, good, good. And I cut you off. You were going to make one final statement about prepayments. Yeah, we just going to talk about what they mean to the secondary market. Uh, basically, uh, because the secondary market trades at a premium, and when prepayments are higher, loans prepay faster, which lowers the return for the investor. So prepayments are bad for the secondary market. And um, again, if, we see, if they start keeping up, it's going to hurt pricing in the secondary market. What is the premium today for an average prime 175, 25 year 7A loan? Uh, well, I'll use the two and three quarters uh, okay. gross margin. That's a, that's a benchmark. Um, in the long end, Right now, we're seeing around you know 118, slightly inside of 118. Uh, at the beginning of June, that was more like 119 and a half. Wow. Um, because the rates, because the Fed looks like they're going to start raising rates in September, you know, again, the, the premium has started to decrease and expectation of higher prepaid. Great. Um, give me your crystal ball. What's going to happen with premiums through the end of the year? Well, I, I think we'll still see some some weakness there. Uh, right now, again, we're at you know a little inside 118. We might see them get down in the you know the 115 to 116 range, especially when when rates do start moving higher. Uh, but I don't, I don't think we'll see any really significant decreases um, because again, prepayments have are are still pretty uh, low by historical standards. Bob, how do rising interest rates affect premiums again? I'm a little fuzzy on that. Uh, basically, uh, rising rates will push uh, borrowers, borrowers who have floating rate loans into trying to refinance into fixed rate loans. Um, rising rates will uh, cause them to have higher rates on their loans, and they're trying to have better control over their, in- their, their interest costs. So that will incent borrowers to go out and try to refinance their loan. Which will drive premiums downward then because of higher prepayments. Right, because prepays higher and then premiums will move down. We're going to start the webinar at the top of the hour. We'd like to start every Coleman webinar early, 10 minutes, work out all the technical glitches, make sure everyone's online. It's the right day, and I always like to invite an expert in the field to talk about SBA lending. We have Bob Judge. Bob, you and I are partners on a secondary market summit. We're going to call it the summit this year. Uh, we've done this for okay. about seven, eight, nine years. Uh, we bring together Wall Street, Main Street, and SBA. Bring them all together and talk about that. Um, I always like to do a little history lesson. We had the first one in 2008, and what minor event occurred when we met that morning? 
Well, that was a interesting uh, time because especially you had Lehman Brothers uh, went uh, bankrupt uh, at that time. So it was a very um, good time to start thinking about how you know global events uh, you know uh, affect uh, the BSA market. There was no market. The market was completely. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, basically there was no market at the time for a couple of weeks. That's true. Well, tell us a little bit about what the agenda is going to be. Obviously, we're going to talk about SBA 7A market. You gave a preview. Uh, SBA 504, how, that secondary market is coming back strong, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, the 504 market, the secondary market, the first lead, uh, for those who are unfamiliar, uh, basically uh, shut down after the credit crisis. It has started to slowly come back. Um, and we always like to cover that from the uh, fundamentals of the market as well as loan structure and things like that for people who want to sell uh, the first lane of 504s. What type um, of another thing we're talking about this year, that which we haven't done before, is the SBIC right. market. Um, that is the fastest growing program at, at, at SBA. Um, so we'll be covering those as well, and things like defaults and, and volunteer prepayments on the underlying debentures, as well as having um, some experts come in to talk about SBICs. Uh, and it does have a carve out from um, the uh, Dodd Frank rules, so it's the only mechanism for a bank to do any kind of private equity type, type lending uh, or investing. So it's becoming very popular amongst banks, so it's a very timely uh, time to talk about. Bob, what is the average premium on a typical 504 first these days? Uh, it'll, it'll Fluctuate to sit between you know a one and five points typically again depending upon the structure of the loan and the rate they're not uh, they're not in the seven a uh, type levels but um, you can still you know make a, a fair amount of money off it you also will get um, obviously the upfront fees from the loan as well as an ongoing servicing right in a rising rate environment do you see those premiums increasing on the five hundred four first they could because. Uh, uh, 504 should become a more popular, should regain its popularity as a program in, rate, in a rising rate environment because the loans tend to be have longer uh, resets or even fixed rates. So I, I do think that it'll get, as people become more uh, interested in the program, we should see uh, uh, premiums also tend to rise a little bit there as well. Great. Well, I wanted to give everybody a, just a feel for perhaps something outside your normal area of expertise. The, uh, the secondary market is very, very important for our program. Uh, the right now, 7A is very lucrative, 504 not so. Of course, everything goes in cycles, and I certainly see 504 coming back strongly. Uh, final question, Bob. I don't know if you're following the numbers. Are we going to run out of money this year in 7A? Um, I think I think we should just about get there. I mean, it's not going to have a lot of uh, extra days or extra dollars, but uh, I, I, I think that it'll be a near thing, but we should get pretty close to, to filling the um, how much we have as well as right to the, the end of uh, September, the fiscal year. So I think we should be okay. Yeah, I agree with the people I talked to say so. And remember what happened last year. We were short by about a week or 10 days, and Congress just said bump the bump the cap to allow lenders to keep on making loans. If there is an issue, it's going to be in the no more than two-week window. But again, I'm with you. The people I talk to say we're going to be okay. Congress has shown an appetite. A Republican Congress has shown an appetite to step up and cover any shortfall.